Hi there, Tamara Carroll, the Joy Queen and your creativity coach. I have just discovered the fun and messy um, experience of doing poor painting. And I am just a beginner at all of this, but I had some of my close friends express some interest in how to do it. So I thought I would just do this really quick little video and show you. So what I did was I picked up one of these kits from Joann's and it has all of these paints in it. I believe it was like $29 and then I used a 40% off coupon. Um, went yesterday shopping with a girlfriend, Julie, and she told me about this kit and I thought, wow, that's super easy. Might as well just start out with the simple and then uh, figure it out from there. Uh, and the next time that I uh, create some paints and everything. I'm going to do the medium and make it myself out of some glue and some different mixtures. But for right now, we're just going to use this really simple kit. So what was on the inside of this kit comes like an instruction manual. Uh, not really a manual, but like a little flyer. And it has some other different um, textures and additional techniques on the back. I did use up my um, popsicle sticks. So I'm just using some plastic knives today because I used them all up yesterday. And let's see, you also get some of the plastic cups and you get the gloves, which I highly recommend wearing. Um, I am a finger painter. I paint with my hands typically. And yesterday I didn't wear the gloves and I was really sorry because I went to church this morning with paint all over me. It's really hard to get off. So I'm not sure if it's the silicone that's in the mixture or what, but definitely wear gloves and wear clothes that you don't care anything about, truly. Okay, and then also inside of the kit, um, they give you a like a little canvas that you can use as your starter canvas. I would recommend um, that you purchase we just went to the Dollar Tree and we got one of those, you know, kind of tins that you can lay and see it's got all the paint down at the bottom. And this is really cool. You can actually peel this off later on and you can apply it to um, jewelry. There's ways that people have been making jewelry and they call these skins. So that's another fun thing for another day. Inside the box also, you also get like a drop cloth, but I always just use like a a dollar store um, tablecloth, if you will. And then one of the fun things that I picked up was a colander. We got these from the Dollar Tree. And um, so one of the things that I did was, uh, it was called a, a dirty pour, where you would mix up your paints and then you pour it all into one cup, kind of in layers. And then you laid, I laid the um, colander like this on my paint and I just poured the paint in and barely lifted it up and all of the paint came out of the various little holes and it gave it a pattern. So that was a really cool thing to do. So for a buck, super fun. And then one of the other things that I did pick up, uh, we were looking at the kits that they had there. Um, don't waste your money on like the glitter. They had like a $10 package. Uh, for glitter that's all it was glitter and glue and so you can go anywhere and pick up you know glitter you can get that from the Dollar Tree and it just said to sprinkle it on the top or you could mix it into your paint so um, they also suggested like micas if you have something like that sitting around so I had some of this um, this is fluorescent I don't even know if it's embossing so you know, we're gonna use the hot gun in a little while to try to bring out some cells, so we'll see if that works. So, now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and mix my, oops, sorry, let's see if I can get this thing to stand up again. I'm sorry. Okay, so I have to be more careful, I guess, on my table and my little wobbly stand that I have on my recorder. So, 
sorry. Okay, so next I'm gonna do is pick my colors that I want to put into my cups that I'm gonna use. And because I have my pink uh, fluorescent, I wanna be sure that I use something that is going to show up. Um, so this is the silicone, shaky hand, sorry. So this is what they call cell medium. Um, if you join some of the acrylic pouring groups, they will give you some really great ideas on different products that you can use for this. But again, just for the sake of being simple today, this comes in the kit. And the cells are like the circles that you want to bring out in the paint. It's somehow the silicone um, interacts with the paint and then when you use the hot, uh, sometimes people use like a torch, like a kitchen torch. That kind of scares me. I have a really hot gun, like an air gun. They say not to use a blow dryer because that has too much airflow and it'll blow your paint everywhere. Um, but anyway, we'll just go ahead and get busy and then when we get to that part, um, I can explain that a little bit more. So for the sake of wanting to use the, um, the glitter in that, I think... I'm going to go with, I want to go with yellow, Let's do some yellow here. So this is, um, this is special pouring paint that comes in the kit. And I did about, let's see, what did I do? I did one large one and I did two smaller paintings about this size yesterday. So I'll turn that upside down, see if I can get a little bit more out of it. What other color should I use? Um, I love this turquoise, so let's use a little bit of this. And I probably would want a little bit more paint than what is coming out of these cups because I'm, I don't have very much in here and that's kind of a bummer. But, like I said, I used this all up yesterday. Here's a pretty green. I should probably shake it up a little bit. Got quite a bit more green than I had of the other ones. You can tell turquoise and yellow are my favorites. And, let's see, this is red, dark blue. I know I've got quite a bit of dark blue, so maybe I'll use this one. There is only one metallic color in the kit. They just give you one, um, one blue, or one gold, I'm sorry. I had blue on my mind, so they only give you one gold. And then there's black, and I am gonna make some white. And I might put the pink sparkles in my white, just because I know that it will show up. Oh boy, I don't have very much paint left. All right, so let me move this stuff to the side here. Hopefully I won't knock over my phone again. Okay, so now I have the, um, the cell magic or the silicone, and I'm just gonna put a couple drops. They said about two or three drops, but I put a little bit more I watched a video on it and they said to put a little bit more. And I'm not gonna stir it right away. Um, they did suggest that you just let it sit on the top for a bit and not to stir it. And the same thing when you are, um, when you are pouring your paint in to a cup where you're doing layers, um, you don't want to stir it up because you want it to stay in layers. And there's something magical about this, uh, this kind of paint. It really stays very, um, I'm going to put some of this, this pink in here. It really stays very thick and it layers really nicely. So, I hope you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to try my best to, to hold it up so that you guys can see it. So now I am going to stir my pink because I put some of that glitter 
down inside my cup. I'm just going to stir that one up a bit. And you know, I think I am going to use the colander and um, maybe I can hold this. you can see how the paint can go in and then it'll just kind of come out and we'll just I'll just see how it works so let's see and they said to start with your lightest colors first so that would be my white actually I think I'm just gonna pour it and then I'll hold it up so you could see so I'm just gonna pour the white and I have seen people put gesso on their on their uh, canvas first that would probably work really well and then the next color I'm going to use will be my yellow. And I didn't stir these. Maybe I should. Maybe I'll try stirring the next one. I told you I'm very beginner at this, you guys. I'm going to stir that just a tad. I wouldn't over stir it. So I'm just putting the blue right on top. I'll lift up the phone in a minute and show you what that looks like. Then I'm gonna put my green, I'm gonna go ahead and stir that just a bit. Do you guys remember, if you're my age, we used to have like those spinners, you remember? They were like a spinner that, um, or even at the fair, they would spin around and you would take the paint and you'd squirt it and the paint would splatter everywhere. Reminds me of that. But this you need to be, oh, I didn't stir that again. This you need to be um, patient. You need to be very patient with this because the paint flows really slowly. I would go to the Dollar Tree and buy some um, some bigger cups. That's what we used yesterday, and that worked really well. Okay, let me see if I can grab the phone here and show you. See what that looks like there? It's all inside. And do you see it? It's actually starting. I'm sorry, you guys. My hand shakes so bad. It's starting to ooze. Let's see if I can get it. see it can you see it starting to ooze out already so let me set that back down and I'm just going to lift this up and let it continue oozing out it's already making a design kind of looks like a tree I like it but the thing is, my friend Julie told me this too, that it's not going to stay in the design that you initially make it. Even when it dries, it um, changes somehow. It changes the formation of it. Okay, so I'm gonna just sprinkle this around on the canvas a little bit. Let's see if I can get more of the paint to come out. Now, I have heard that you can use the cheaper crafting acrylic paint and make your own medium with it. A lot of people don't want to do this type of art because they think they're going to waste a lot of paint. But, you know, those craft paints are super cheap. They're like 50 cents a bottle. I don't think I'd use my really good stuff unless I got really good at this. But right now I'm still just playing. It's just relaxing. Oh gosh, I'm getting paint on myself. I really want some of this blue that's in here. So I'm going to see if I can scrape some of it out of my container. But yeah, there's some waste, but it's not bad. Okay, I don't think any of that's coming out. So let me set that to the side, and I'll show you what this is looking like. Whoa! <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to... Just let it pour around. This is the part, it's really slow. 
So you have to be really patient. Julie and I were talking yesterday, my friend Julie Payne, and we were talking about how it would be cool if we had like a little easel to set up in our tin and then we could um, have several of them going at one time. You know, you could just leave it and let it drip if you wanted it to go a certain direction. And then the sides, you know, you can use the, use your fingers and just, you know, like here's like the side here. So I would probably just pull that down and around. I'm so glad I have gloves on today because I was quite a mess yesterday. And I don't mind having my, my hands in paint at all, but um, this was really difficult to get off. I showered and scrubbed and I still had paint, blue paint on me today when I went to church. So it's coming. In just a minute, I'm going to um, get the blower and see if I could blow it and get some of the, um, the cells to come out. There's some in there already. I've seen people in my mentoring group. I'm in um, Matt Tomey's, Matt Tomey's um, art mentoring program on Facebook. And I have some friends that I've met in that group and they do some amazing work with the, um, with the pores. And many times, you know, we can see with our spiritual eyes and we can see other things in the paintings. And so my friends, they go in and they paint over it and they paint designs into it. And that's, that's really what I would love to be able to do. That's my goal. So let's see, I think I need to get this part here to drip down. Another thing that you can do is get a straw and you can blow with the straw into certain areas, especially if some of the colors um, aren't coming out that you know that you put in. And you can notice I put in that pink and the white and it's not even showing. So I think what I would have to do is go in and, um, and sprinkle it on the top. Or maybe, I really like glitter glue, so you know you could just get some glitter glue and um, I don't know, is it going down? Get some, it's going down the sides. Um, and you could put it on after it's dried. People use varnishes on them and they're able to get, um, you know, an even nicer shine. This one is almost down. I've got a big glop of the mixed paint down here in my in my container and I'm wondering if I could somehow scoop some of that up. I'm gonna try. And when I do that it kinda it's already mixed up when I use it in my hands. So I don't really like that. So I'll have to see if I can get some more of that to drip down because I didn't like when I put my hand in that. I don't like how it mixed all together so and that's the other tip i was going to tell you is do not um, do not touch this your paint job um, your painting creation for like 24 hours i accidentally i had a big bubble and i thought oh i'm just going to see if that is um, done yet or see if it's dried and i poked a big hole in the paint and thankfully it's a mixed media piece that I'm working on so I can cover it up with something else. But I was nonetheless disappointed with that. So I wish I could just get that paint on there. I got some of it. Let's see, I just got some on that tip. So let's see if I can get it to drip down instead of across. So I think I'm going to set this down now. I'm going to walk over and get the hot glue, I mean not the hot glue, my hot gun, and I'm going to spray it um, with some hot heat, and I'll see if we can get some of the um, cells to pop out through it. It's awfully pretty though, isn't it? So let me set that down. I'm going to set this over here. 
I'm going to touch my phone. You see the back of my phone, it's covered with paint already. So I'm going to turn my phone and see if I can get it to show when I get over here. Hang on, I'll be right there. It's because of the way the cord is. And I've got a lot of light right here. So let me, let me bring the phone a little closer. Good thing this isn't like a professional video, you guys. It's just for you to have an idea. And let's see what we can do. And you have to be careful not to torch the paint um, too much. You don't want to make it crinkle up. Um, scorch it. That's what we don't want to do. We don't want to scorch it. And this is a really hot industrial gun with air. I'm not getting the cells that they did. I need it a little hotter. Just move it around a little bit more. I'm just going to concentrate on one area to see if I could get the cells to come up so you can see it. The metal is getting hot. And this gun gets pretty hot, so I have to be careful that I'm not scorching my paint. See how it's even drying darker? if I'm going to get any good cells out of this or not, you guys. This thing's really hot. I'm going to be careful where I set it. Okay, so... Show that to you. There's some interesting shapes in there. But I don't really think that many cells came out. So I obviously need more work, <laughs> more practice, but it's really cool. It's a really cool design. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, this is gonna sit and dry for another couple days and then I will um, then I will go and put um, some sprinkles into it and um, may put some varnish over it if you don't like it you can always start again and just put some gesso over it and paint over it completely that's one of the great things about paint is if you oh where'd I go I don't know what I did <laughs> So if you if you don't like it, you can always redo it. So anyway, hope that was helpful to you guys. I'll talk to you later. Tamara Carroll, the Joy Queen, and your creativity coach. Oh man, I got pain all over me. Bye.